Q&A. <laughs> Alright, cool. What's happening? So, 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 No mucking around, no prisoners, let's go. Hello hair growers and welcome back for another hair video. My name's Thomas if you're brand new here and I make style and hair related videos every single Monday. So in today's video we are doing a QA. and a It has been a minute since I've done this. I've actually built a heap of other social media presences I guess or places where I hang out on the internet. We've got the Man Buns and Mains Instagram page. We've got my normal Instagram, we've got the subreddit, we've got the Facebook group, we've got the channel community feed, like there's freaking so many places to keep track of now. <laughs> what am I doing to myself? I decided to post the Q&A graphic out on all of the channels and there was an influx of questions. I actually get quite overwhelmed with things like this because a lot of you guys ask really good questions and it sucks that I can't answer them all, but I have backlogged all the questions that came through this time on every single Instagram, all the Reddit things for future reference. So without further ado, let's get into them. Oh, before we get into the questions, if you haven't joined the, the Facebook group yet, we do have a Facebook group for guys growing their hair out. It's a really, really good time. There's over 5,000 members in there now. We're all lifting each other up through the awkward stages of hair growth. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure you come and join it. The link will be in the description box for you. Okay, so question number one from Emiliano. Ding. <laughs> the name ninja, the name assassin. Sorry, I got this name wrong. This is how we spell it. Uh, this one's from the Facebook group as well. How good does it feel or how does it feel to be able to be part of a long haired men's community? Fucking great, actually. It's actually the best thing ever. Even when you're having a down day, there's al always so much positivity flowing around in there. There's so much inspiration and there's literally the flow of content is endless. I actually love it. It's my favorite place to hang out on the internet. I don't need to be someone there. I can just sit there, scroll through, interact with people. My answer to that is it's fucking awesome and you guys should join. Question number three is from Travis. So Travis is actually a Facebook group member as well. Not only is he a Facebook group member, he is a moderator. Travis's question was, what are some products that you absolutely cannot go without when it comes to your hair care routine? And what do you think everyone else should not skip as well for optimum hair health? So for me personally, the things that I can't go without are my leave-in cream, my deep intense conditioning mask, and my hair oil. The leave-in cream and the hair oil go on every day after I get out of the shower to help keep my hair moisturized. I also, the deep intense conditioning mask is pretty much, I reckon, the secret weapon to how my hair is so shiny when it's straight. So I posted this video here not long ago in the Facebook group and on my Instagram as my first reel, my Instagram reel. And I just had my hair blow dried from the hairdresser and I have not had a keratin treatment for literally over 10 months now. Like it's been ages since I've had one. So within 10 months, that keratin would have worn off. And then all of my hair that comes through here, yeah, a good, a good chunk of hair actually would have grown out in nine months. And this hair here is still really beautiful and shiny and healthy. My hair care routine isn't that psycho. It's literally just a leave-in cream and oil. And then it's also the deep intense conditioning mask once a week. And I did a video about those hair care hacks that will save your hair. And literally for me, they work. As for people not skipping anything, Thing. The one thing I would say is make sure you're using some sort of leave-in conditioner to moisturize the ends. If you've got really straight, really oily hair, this probably doesn't apply to you, but for every other hair type, that's the one that you wanna do. Keeping the hair hydrated is what's gonna keep it stronger and free from breakage, okay? The next question is from Scott Smith. So Scott Smith is another Man Buns and Mains Facebook group member. Scott's question is, currently the only way I can get my curly hair back in shape uh, in the morning is by wetting it. Is there some other way to make it look good without wetting it? This is a good question. To answer this question, you're actually on the right track. Wetting your hair is the easiest way to reshape it. Reshaping it without wetting it is very difficult unless you're gonna just straighten it straight away or use a curling wand, which actually takes a lot of time. So in the morning, it's never really that practical. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've all got busy lives, busy days, we're going to work, we're doing school, we're doing whatever we're doing. An easy way to get around it though, which I've just been introduced to, is a diffuser with a hairdryer. So what a diffuser does, it's one of those big round heads with the claw on it. I never really knew what they were for until I did hair styling. They're actually a really great way to speed up the natural drying process in literally a fraction of the time. So if you wanna have your hair reshaped, you wanna dry it to its normal state really quickly, look into a hairdryer with the diffuser and try that out. It's really, really cool. 
Other than that, I think using water, you're gonna have to do it. Like, there's no other real way around it, unfortunately. Ah. <laughs> question number five is from Cody Enslow. So this was a really interesting question that came in in the Facebook group. So this is what Cody had to say. He said, I don't know how to put this, but the best way I can think is, how can we normalize girly hairstyles? I'm a straight guy, but I can pull off pretty odd styles. But since they're for girls, I can only do it as a joke. I know one general answer is just to be secure within yourself, but it's easier said than done. I loved this question, particularly because I'm, yeah, I'm kind of the same. Uh, well, I'm not a straight guy, but hairstyles like this with my little space buns, that's typically a girly style, right? But I actually love the look on myself. And my answer to this, having more self-confidence or being uh, secure within yourself is definitely an answer, but par a second to that, I would actually say the best answer is persistence. So take, for example, just long hair for men in general, okay? It takes a long time of repetition to start a movement, if you like, because what's happening, those hairstyles that are considered girly, society as it's built right now, believes those hairstyles are like that. It takes persistence and time for beliefs to change. Beliefs don't change overnight. You can't just go, yeah. This hairstyle is great to go. Like it has to start somewhere, has to get a little bit bigger and it has to catch on with people and start snowballing. That's the only way you can make trends happen. It's finally happening, you know? Like I've been talking about this stuff for three years now and all of a sudden it just catches on. So that's really what it's about. And years ago when I was talking about all of this long hair stuff and nobody was really showing interest in it, it is a bit defeating, like you're kind of like, oh. But the only way I think it's caught on and now is cool is by sticking with it, you know what I mean? It takes a while for a movement to happen. So I would say find an outlet where you can wear those styles and make it cool. So for me, like even long hair on social media, just being able to post in my videos and talk about man buns and all that stuff is a great way to start getting the message out there. And then obviously a little bit later on in the piece, that's when things pick up. But persistence, I think, is a really key element of it. And how you get that out there is what will change it. But it does take time. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> the same thing happens with the whole gay movement. Like from now compared to like 10 years ago, the normalization of it has changed so much just because more people over time have been comfortable coming forward about it. And it, yeah, when it gets to a point, it just like, it's like filling up a cup with water and then there's a point where it just overspills, gushes out and then it takes over the whole fucking world. Question number six, this one's from Instagram. So it's at, uh, the Instagram handle is it's viraj. The question is, how to stop hair fall? Okay, here, listen here and listen good. You can't. You can't stop hair fall. It's a natural bodily function, okay? You need to have hair fall. If you don't have hair fall, it means your hair's not doing its job. Each hair has its own cycle, and when, it, when it's time for a hair to fall out, it just literally detaches itself and whoop, off it comes, which is why you see 150 hairs falling out of your head a day or more. You know what I mean? It's a natural bodily function and you can't stop it. No matter what, there's all these fucking bullshit videos like saying how to stop hair fall. This is how you can stop your hair from falling out. Really, you're either it's either falling out normally as it should or there's actually an underlying problem and there's hair loss going on. It's if you see more than what you're used to in your hair fall, like on your pillow or in the shower or when you brush your hair, that's when you should go and see a professional about getting it sorted out, okay? Other than that, hair fall is just a natural part of life and that's the end of that, okay? Stop trying to like make it not happen because it needs to happen. It means new hair's about to come through and that's what you want. Moving on to question number seven. So this one is from Reddit actually. Uh, so user this pack, <laughs> this user. Okay, I work out five times a week and get all sweaty. Is it okay to just rinse your hair or do I need to try and use dry shampoo to combat the sweat? Here's the thing. In my opinion, it's fine to just rinse your hair and get on with the day. Every time I, I work out pretty similar, I, I go to the gym five to six times a week and every time I finish the gym, I'm pouring with sweat and there's no way in hell I'm leaving that gym without wetting my hair at least. You know, I don't wash my hair all the time. I don't like using the dry shampoo prior to a workout either because dry shampoo really dries things out. So I find even with the sweat going on, using so much dry shampoo just, it just makes it puffy, dry and frizzy. I hate it. So I don't use that. Uh, the only time I'll use dry shampoo is literally 
on the odd occasion that I leave the gym, I don't have time to have a shower. Ooh. I mean, no, sorry. When I leave the gym and I don't have a lot of time, I'll just do tits, pits, and ass, and I won't even wet my hair. And then once I get in front of the mirror, I go quick dry shampoo, comb, 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 tie it up, look schmick, out the door, bang, done. And I did a video on how I actually do that after the gym if I'm in a rush, but normally, I always rinse my hair after the gym. I just, I'm riddled with sweat, it's everywhere. I just go nut, washing it, or not washing it, just rinsing it off with some water. I apply all my healthy hair products and off I go. I think there's no harm in that. People will tell you as well that wetting your hair too often causes lots of damages and all this other shit, but I honestly, I do it all the time. My hair's still very intact. My hair's still very long and very beautiful, so. Yes. There you go, and that's what I do. You're okay to rinse it every time after the gym to get the sweat off. That is A-OK. -okay. Now moving on to question number eight. This one is from Darcy McFarlane. So Darcy says, is it okay to not condition every time you wash? Okay, <laughs> it is, but I wouldn't. There's a reason shampoo and condition had two peas in a pod. Shampoo, when you put it on, it roughs the cuticle up to get all the dirt out and opens them up. The conditioner is designed to come and smooth it over. If you wash without conditioner, you're gonna find that your hair feels a lot rougher and is a lot buffier as opposed to if you used conditioner during that wash, okay? So you can wash without conditioner, but I wouldn't, all right? The conditioner's there to smooth the cuticle over and save your life. I even find sometimes that my hair is buffy once I've even conditioned. Compared to not conditioning, if I just wash and don't condition, or in my advice, just condition. Now for question number nine. So this one is from Instagram as well. So this is from Nemo the Nobody. Oh. You're someone, Nemo. The question is, is it normal to lose more hair when you're growing it out? Okay, here's the thing. If you're struggling with hair loss, yes. <laughs> but if you're not, the reason that you're noticing more hair fall as you're growing it out is because the hair is longer and more noticeable, okay? So people with really short hair, they also too molt like German shepherds. You just don't know because the hairs are so much shorter and less noticeable. As it gets longer, You'd know, it's literally, it's like, whoa, there's meters of it here. I was a victim to this when I first started growing my hair out. I was like in the shower going like, holy fuck, there's so much hair here. And then I'd have a clump of hair in my hand and because it was longer and all tangled over itself, it looks like there's way more than there actually is. But if you let it dry and then tangle the hairs apart, you're like, oh, it's not even that much. Like when it happened, I was like, oh, I'm balding. I would say no, you're not seeing more hair fall. You're just seeing like, longer hairs falling out, <laughs> if that makes sense. And now for question number 10, so this is our final lucky question, and this is from Kyle Gammons. So he says, which do you prefer, ponytails or man buns, and why? Please list some examples of situations, or some situations, which you might pick one over the other. I love this one. So I actually like both. I like ponytails and I like man buns. However, man buns are my go-to for sure. I am wearing a man bun most of the time, uh, just because it's quick and easy. So man buns will be good for every occasion. <laughs> like, if I'm going out, I can make it look really neat. If I don't give a shit that day, I can just tie it up and whatever. Um, ponytails, I will only wear when my hair is done. The reason being is I'm not really a fan of my hair in a ponytail when it's not done. So even like this, it's I like a really sleek ponytail. This is not a sleek ponytail look. Like my hair's actually been done today with my diffuser, but I would not wear that ponytail. It's just too raccoon tail, like you know what I mean? I like a really sleek, beautiful, tight, shiny ponytail. And I would usually wear a ponytail when after I've had a keratin treatment or if I had my hair straightened by the hairdresser or if I'm going somewhere really fancy and it's been straightened. Other than that, ponytails aren't really my jam. You know what I mean? I did wear a ponytail once in... It was the Good Jobs for Guys with Long Hair video. You can check that out where I'm wearing my ponytail. It's actually a fake ponytail. It's not even mine, but it made everything look slick and it was beautiful. Man buns all the time. They're my favorite. Ponytails, I'll only wear if I want to look really slick and really clean. Uh, I will not wear a ponytail when my hair is bushy <laughs> or curly. I'm not fond of the look, so hope that answers your question. All right, and that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for submitting your questions. 
like I said before, I have stored all of the extra questions that I couldn't answer in today's video uh, in my database. So I've got them sitting there and I can go over them at a later date, okay? I will, every time I do a Q&A, just put a poll out there just to you know get some fresh questions in. However, I'm gonna be using those uh, to bring more content to you in the future, okay? Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. If you wanna join the Facebook group, link is in the description box and I can't wait to see you in there. It is a really fun time and I'll catch you later. Oh yeah, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Catch you later, bye.